Okay, so in the last video, we finally finished all of our cloud function stuff. We have our data being sent to our Elasticsearch server, which is great. Uh, but there was an issue. We had a problem where we saw that the country was actually assigned to my email. So let's fix that first of all. So let's open up the Firebase console, which I don't have open, so I need to get that open. So here's the database and here we have the posts and as you can see the country is assigned to my email. So that says to me that there's probably a data entry issue. So if we pull up our application and we go into post fragment, post fragment, let's take a look at where we're inserting the data which is right here and it says set country to contact email. So that's definitely not what we want. We want to set that to country and that will fix that issue. Um, but also let's fix the data in the database because that's wrong. Uh, so I'm just going to change all of these to Canada and just so you know also too when I change these it's going to trigger the cloud function and the, the data will be updated on the Elasticsearch server also so as soon as I change that to Canada it's going to trigger the cloud function uh, so I can change this one also to Canada that will trigger the cloud function and one more time Canada there we go so now we can test it let's open up postman and that was me testing some queries so let's just send this query to search everything. Remember I said underscore search question mark Q equals star will search everything. And there we go. So we have that first post, the calculator, the second one, and the third one. So there's all three of our posts. And they're also showing the correct country. So we have Canada, Canada, and Canada. So there we go. So now before we uh, move on, we're, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to be making the queries to the server. So if I go over to this tab here, I have the same, everything's the same here, it's just the URL is different. So I have my server, uh, we're searching the posts, index, looking for post objects. We have underscore search because that's the function we're using with Elasticsearch. Then we do question mark and we can, we can set the default operator to and because if we don't do this, the default operator will be or. And this is all found in the, in the Elasticsearch documentation. So check that out if you want some more information. But I'm going to show you everything you need to know here in this video. And so the way we make queries is we, we um, first we, spe we need to specify the default operator because like I said, if you don't specify the default operator, it will automatically be assigned to or. And the, the operator is this plus sign here. So when I say default operator equals and, that means this plus sign is going to be interpreted as an and. If I don't say default or operator equals and, then this plus sign will get interpreted as an or. So we don't want to use an or, we want to use an and because we want to we want to refine our searches. We want to be we want to search for keywords and then we want to search for other things. So so the way you do this is the you first of all use an and sign and we can say q equals this is the keyword that we're searching for in the post. So this is going to search it'll search the entire thing and it's going to look for any parameter that says awesome. And then we can add another, we can refine our search more by going plus in other words, and then we can say city equals Abbotsford or city colon Abbotsford. And if we wanted to refine it even more, we could say uh, and state province equals uh, British Columbia. I'm not sure actually how to add a space here. So let's say Edmonton. Um, so we'll, we'll say Edmonton for the state or the province. And so if we search that, we should get no results. So we get none because none of our posts fit that criteria. But if I was to maybe replace, let's let's take a look at the database and we have one that's in Edmonton. So right here, Edmonton. And so if I search, where's the, what's the city? City is Edmonton, state province is Alberta. So let's search that. We'll go city is Edmonton and then state province is Alberta. And the keyword will just change to everything. So we get one result, which is what we expect because we only have one post that's in Edmonton, Alberta. So then I, I think if I change this to British Columbia and then set the city to Abbotsford, I believe we only have one post that matches that also. Yeah, so uh, British Columbia, right here you can see the state province. And then the city is Abbotsford. And then we can we can further refine if we wanted to. We could like uh, change the keyword to say, you know, whatever. I could change that to awesome. But that's going to get the same post because that also has 
this awesome in here. So alternatively, I could get rid of all of these um, extra search parameters. So I could cut those out and I could just search for awesome. And I'd still only get that one result because there's only one post that says awesome. And then once again, if I were to replace that awesome with a star, that means you're searching for, whoops, that means you're searching for everything and it will return every post in the on the server. So that's, uh, that's it. That's pretty much how we're going to be doing the queries. Um, so obviously you can remember from the application where the user had the option to choose their city, their province, and their country. That's going to be put into the query. And then we're just going to ask them for uh, a, um, a, some search text, which is going to be captured from that search bar that's in the application. So let's get started working on our query. So we're going to be using retrofit to make the queries. So to start off, let's actually um, add the dependencies for the retrofit library. So let's just go to get those dependencies from the retrofit website. So go to square.github.io slash retrofit, and you can grab the dependency from the Gradle section right here. So I'm just going to copy it, go back to Android Studio. Uh, I'm just going to type a heading retrofit and paste that in. And we also need to specify, we also need to get a, a library uh, that, that helps us parse this, the type of data that we're going to be dealing with. And we're going to be dealing with JSON data. So we can just scroll up a little bit here and grab the JSON library right here. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to Android Studio and just go retro fit JSON lib. And then I can do compile paste that in. Whoops, I hit alt, not control, paste that in. And there we go. So those are the two dependencies that we're going to need to use retrofit and then just hit sync. And uh, if you've watched my retrofit tutorials on my YouTube, that those videos will be definitely helpful if you need a little bit more help. But I'm going to go over everything we need uh, in, in this series. Uh, it looks like a Gradle sync problem. Something is wrong. Oh, I didn't specify the version. Uh, so go back to the build.gradle file and we need to specify the version. So 2.3.0, I'm just matching what the retrofit one is and hit sync and there we go. Okay, so to start off when we're parsing the data, we need to first specify what the data structure is going to look like when we're retrieving a request. And we, when you're using retrofit, what you do is you build object classes and then that gets essentially, it's, it's very similar to Firebase. You, you build object classes and then it retrieves those object classes in the form of JSON data or converts it to JSON data or converts the JSON data into object classes. Likewise, very similar to Firebase, like I said. So that's what we're going to be doing to retrieve the data. So pretty much what we, what we want to do, how we start this is we want to look at our data and kind of reverse engineer uh, what we need it to, what we, what our object classes are going to be. So if we look at the data, each one, you, we basically receive a list of hits, as you can see here. This, we receive a list of hits. Uh, it gives us a total of how many hits. It gives us a max score. And then it gives us another, uh, another list of hits. Actually, this isn't a list. This is an object. This is an object hits. And this, this is a list of hits. And then this list of hits retrieves the post objects. So like that would be post number one. That would be post number two. And then this would be post number three. And so that's what we are after. So we need to build object classes that represent what this data looks like. So essentially we need to build uh, a hit object and then we need to put a hits list inside the hits object. And then inside the hits list, we'll have the post objects. That's what we're going to be aiming to build in Android Studio. So I'm just going to kind of get started. I'm not going to do too much. So just right click on models and go and the first thing we'll do is create the, that hits object that I mentioned and I'm not going to make any fields or anything now I'm just going to create a new class and this one's going to be the hits list like I mentioned now we'll create one more object and that's going to be uh, a, a post index uh, the reason why I'm creating a post index this is going to be very similar to the post class but it's going to be a little different because if you look at, at uh, postman what happens is inside the hits list you get the post objects but the post objects are actually here in this in this source object. So we have source and then there's the post object. And each one of these hits contains that. So source and then the post object, source and then the post object. So this 
this post index is essentially what I mean by um, post source. That's getting this object right here. So actually, it would probably make more sense if I said post source. So I'll, I will change it to post source. Uh, this will be refactor to post source because that makes more sense as to uh, compared to what we're looking at in Postman here. So like I said, I'm not going to make any of the fields now. This video is getting a little long. So now that we have our classes in the next video, we'll start working on them and putting the fields in and moving on to the next portion and actually retrieving data from the Elasticsearch index. So I'll see you guys in that next video.